Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Our season of Advent for all it might have been for you in these last four weeks, or maybe for the little that happened ineffectively, it is coming to a close. And it's rather unique, of course, that it is coming to a close, and then immediately the period of the birth of Jesus Christ. But I think it would be a critical mistake on our part if we followed suit that we just stepped out of one season and turned around and just kind of abruptly be absorbed into the next, the next moment, Christmas. This sort of, this sort of event takes time. You know, in the Gospel, Mary receives a momentous message First of all, of course, the idea of, a, of an angel. I don't know that, that we can really, you know, we just, we're so familiar with those, that text, that, you know, an angel came and visited her. And she put out her cigarette or cigar, whatever. <laughs> it almost seems like, oh, yeah, that's okay. It isn't, of course. It's beyond, it's beyond our imagining. It, it was beyond anything she was ever expecting in her life. And so, but the message comes directly, almost too directly. You will be the mother of the God Most High. Now again, we're familiar with the message, but what about the depth of it? It comes abruptly, but Mary's acceptance, she's human. First of all, she's afraid. The angel tries to... to subside that, to give her a sense of, it's okay. But that, that newness of things and the whole idea of a message, which, how do you comprehend that? And when she does question the angel, the, com the answer comes back. Did you ever hear this answer? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Did you ever have anybody say that to you? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, perhaps at your baptism. The Holy Spirit. Oh, but it is momentous. It isn't just a kind of a casual sort of thing here. It doesn't happen as if it was, you know, just something we'd go to the store to buy. And so that is, I think, the idea that Mary has to look at this. What if she said no? Oh, wait a minute. But you see, she did have a choice. And whether she says yes or no, it changes her whole life. My dear people, this gospel story is our story. Oh, we may not have a vision of an angel, but we do have the message of God being given to us and it isn't, it isn't just something just for the moment, you know, that tomorrow we'll go on to something else. This is the beginning and this is the end. It's all there. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. We need to take time and think. That's why I say to just move into Christmas. If you're thinking about maybe that today you have to get some, some of your last minute shopping done, or more decorating has to go on before we can really light up that tree and so on, drop it. Drop it. Wait. You can do it even after Christmas. Oh, <laughs> that's unheard of. We're putting the stuff away then. Well, we need to feel this through. We need to be able to live what it is that we're being given there is a, another hymn in our repertoire called the Servant Song, you know that? 
What do you want of me, Lord? Where do you want me to serve you? And God will pick up on that immediately. So dare to say that because comes the answer. Will you come and follow me if I but touch your heart? As we close out Advent, I think we have to give that answer with Mary. Behold, I am your servant. Let it be done to me according to your word. And we answer a gentle but nevertheless powerful yes, yes. And you see, that's it. That's our life. That is what we're all about. Now, Christmas. And the answer has to echo all the way to the resurrection.